This happened just last year, right after I had graduated from grad school. I had graduated with my master's and accepted a paid internship in my field as a content writer in New York. My work basically consisted of writing various information to try and help companies increase their sales. The pay was decent, but the hours were constantly mixed up to the point where I felt overwhelmed. Some weeks I'd get four days, while others I maybe got two. Needless to say, my schedule was never consistent, so I'd be working crazy hours. One day, I had been writing up an article on a new product this company had been releasing soon, and I really had to work hard. The product had a lot of information with it, which meant that I had to take up a lot of my time doing research. Because of this, I had requested to my boss to work late so that I could finish it by morning. With him being the considerate person he was, he gladly gave the okay and allowed me to keep the office building open. This meant that I'd have the whole building to myself so I could bring my A-game. It was around 11pm, and as I'm digging up research on this product, I hear a noise from down the hall. From a distance, it kind of sounded like one of those metal drawers being open. If you've ever worked in an office before, you know what I'm talking about. I just dismiss it as maybe something falling over and just try to focus on my work. However, I've seen too many horror movies to ignore such a thing, and I decided I'd go over to see what it was. The rest of this floor was completely dark, so I grabbed my phone and used the flashlight to light my way to see what it was. I call out a hello, hoping to hear a response from a fellow coworker from across the room. Doing that was probably the stupidest thing to do in a situation like this. Because the second I spoke out, I hear the metal drawer again, this time being shut. At this point, I'm freaking out as the possibility of someone being here was already terrifying enough. But what made it even more concerning was the fact that they weren't responding. I had no idea what another person was doing in this building after hours as I was the only one with a key. That being said, I slowly creep down the aisles of the dark cubicles, half expecting someone to jump out of one of them. Then, as I made it towards the elevator, I look back and see a person crouched down behind a cubicle wall. I couldn't really tell if it was a man or a woman as they were wearing all black with a hoodie on. If I had to say, however, they appeared to be wearing baggy clothes so I assumed it was a guy though I wasn't 100% sure. By some stupid luck, they didn't see me, as they were facing the opposite way. Now I knew I had to be very careful to not make a noise, so I ditched the elevator and slowly opened a door that led to the stairs. Some way, somehow, this person didn't notice me, but I knew that it wouldn't be long before he realized I was gone. I took that chance and ran down the stairs as fast as I could while on the phone with my boss who was obviously sleeping. He sounded annoyed over the phone, but then became concerned when I told him there was someone else in the building. My boss had called the police and even allowed me to lock all possible entrances to the building. The building is located in an area where there weren't many police, so I had to wait outside for a good 15 minutes. Unfortunately, however, this happened to be around the time where our security cameras were being replaced, so there was no footage of him. Even with police practically tossing the building over, they were unable to find him. Searching every room, every closet, every door, nothing. In the end, I just came to the conclusion that the man had simply ran out once he realized I was gone. The next morning, I had gone into work and had found that there was a single file on the floor next to the drawer. The file being mine. A chill ran down my spine as I saw this and thought to myself why this person only took out my file. My floor has a hundred plus employees, so I knew it was no coincidence that he searched my file only. 
This only concerned me even more as I realized that this person knew who I was, knew I'd be staying late, and was able to get into the building. My circle of close friends were small and none of them would ever do something like this. Had this person possibly been another employee? I thought to myself. However, this theory too had problems as why would an employee go through all of that to look through my file? It made no sense and it still doesn't till this day. All I know is that I was being targeted and that I wasn't alone in the building that night. My paranoia from this had rapidly set in to the point where I would feel like I was being watched. Sometimes I'd even have to look behind the shower curtain at home, thinking someone would be there. The craziest part is that whoever it was was likely someone I knew, but I guess I'll never know. As of now, I haven't seen that person since, and I've never worked late again. I used to work as an overnight stalker at a local Italian market in downtown Chicago. It was a small family owned business that mainly sold essential goods such as meats, pasta, breads, and of course, pizza. Everything was imported from Italy by the owner who was the nicest boss anyone could ask for. He was always super friendly to customers and even gave me free food to take home to my parents. I was 17 years old at the time of the story, and I basically stocked all of the items as soon as the truck had come in. Some days I'd even be the cashier and bagger if we were short staffed. One night, my boss, who I'll call Leonardo, had told me that he had a family emergency and told me to watch the shop. I gladly said yes and watched over it until it was time to close. I had already gotten all of my tasks done, so I decided to go behind the counter and play some Sudoku to cure my boredom. It was around 10pm and the shop had closed at 11, so I took this time to sweep the floors and get ready to clock out. As I'm wiping down the countertops, I hear a tap on the front door and see a woman looking inside. I motion for her to come in and she pulls open the door in a hurry. Now, for context, this woman appeared to be in her mid-thirties, wore some jeans and a jacket, and appeared to have been pregnant. This will be important in the story later. I politely welcome her in and ask if I could help her find anything. However, she sort of just ignores me and looks around the store and then asks me if I have milk. She went on about this story of how she needed it for her baby and told me she didn't have much money. After listening to her rant, I had come to the conclusion that she was in desperate need, so I immediately felt sympathy for her. That's when I had offered to buy her a gallon of milk, and that thankfully calmed her down. Needless to say, I buy the milk and wished her luck with the baby. She then thanks me and went on her way. Feeling good about myself, knowing I had done a good deed was the best feeling ever and with that, I got ready to close up. I had clocked out at 11pm and texted my boss that I was leaving and to have a good night. Long story short, I get in my car and slowly drive down the road to my house as it was quiet in this area of the city. I had just pulled out of the shop and as I'm driving down the road, I hear what sounded like yelling from up ahead. It didn't sound like the type of panic yell, but rather the yelling you do when arguing with someone. Being the dumb and eavesdropping teen I was, I drive a little more down and see that the yelling is coming from inside an alleyway. I obviously didn't go in, but I pulled up right to the corner of it and got out of my car to see what was going on. A little ways down the alleyway was an SUV and outside of it was three men and a woman. 
For some reason, the woman is yelling at the man about something and that's when I noticed that it's the same woman who came into the store. I was utterly confused as I didn't know what she could be upset about and that's when I see and hear her do something that shocked me to my core. In a demanding tone, she says, I can't keep doing this. You have yet to pay me while I'm going around wearing this fake pregnancy belly acting like a complete idiot. She then unstraps what appears to be a fake pregnancy belly prop and throws it onto the ground. This shook me so much that I let out a really loud gasp that echoed through the alleyway. This of course got the attention from the people at the end and I distinctly remember one of them saying something along the lines of, Hey you. I took that chance and ran back to my car and floored it down the street. All of a sudden, I hear several gunshots being fired at my car and my back window being shattered. I thankfully managed to get out of there just in time, but not before crying my eyes out. Being worried that I'd somehow be followed, I drive to the nearest police station and make a report. Because I was still a minor, police had to call both my parents and boss to inform them. As I said, my boss was a really nice guy, so he took most of the responsibility for working me so late without other staff. The next day, I was told that the whole shop had been vandalized. The entire register had been yanked from the counter and a lot of food had been stolen. The total damages came out to well over $2,000, which my boss's insurance didn't cover. My parents and I even offered to help by volunteering to clean up, which was heavily appreciated. The shop was thankfully back up and running within a matter of a few weeks and had received more support than ever. This was a major plus for our part, and my boss was even willing to give additional pay. Two years later, he had unfortunately passed away due to stage 4 cancer, and the business was passed on to his son and wife. Even though he was gone, he was still one of the best people I've ever met. I might have even considered him as family. Police had found one of the men, but he refuses to explain what happened to the other two men and the woman. Till this day, I still have no idea what their intentions were or why that woman was carrying around a prop belly. I hope I never see any of them again. This story is a bit short, so I apologize if I don't give much detail, but I'll get straight to the point. I worked as a gas station attendant for about a year straight out of high school. It was a pretty chill job for the most part, though you'd sometimes have to be on your feet all day. I mainly worked the night shift, as I had attended college and had classes during the day. The night shift was decently chill for the most part. You basically swept, mopped, and wiped down everything. Wiping down was a must as this was during COVID and they had really cracked down on the sanitizing. One night, I believe it was a Thursday, I had been doing my nightly routine of sweeping when I hear the sink turn on in the bathroom. I go into the bathroom and see that the sink is in fact on. The weird part was that the knob was turned, which indicated that someone manually turned it on. I turn it off and go back to my post, minding my business. An hour or so later, I then hear the sink in the bathroom turn on again. This time, I grab the bat we have under the desk and open the door only to see no one. At that point, I just simply left work, texting my boss that I was sick. The following week, I had quit my job because I know what happened. I just can't comprehend how to explain it. Till this day, I 100% believe that what happened in that gas station was completely paranormal. This was by far the creepiest thing I've ever experienced. 